Welcome back, y'all, to another episode of Hip Hop Babies album review. Yes, sir. Ski. We are back. Times bar for bar. Mm-hmm. Times, yeah. <laughs> yeah, X. <laughs> this is our guest. Uh, introduce yourself, homie. Tell me what to follow. Oh, All yeah. That real- Mr. Bar for Bar, Sean, Bajwa, whatever you want to call me. You know what I, what it is. It's just another hip hop channel on YouTube talking reviews, random shit in the, in the industry, breakdowns, a little bit mm-hmm. of everything. Follow mm-hmm. everywhere. Bar for Bar podcast uh, on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, YouTube.com slash Bar for Bar. Yeah. And, Subscribe. And Sean really yeah. keeps the content going. Like every time I'm checking YouTube, <laughs> for the most part, there's something new, a breakdown. I, I love your content, man. Your work <laughs> ethic, my man. It uh, is. Um, thank you. It's yeah. tough. <laughs> I yeah, know. I, I see it in your eyes, bro. I have the same look in my eyes when I wake up in the morning. We got to review this fucking Little Sims. God damn it. Uh, sometimes I Might Be Introvert is the album review today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Little Sims has been a hot name in hip hop recently. She was just in the Venom movie, actually. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to spoil anything, but uh, if you didn't know her song Venom, that's her like biggest hit, I think, ever. Uh, or one of one FM. Uh, she was in the Venom movie. Uh, it was pretty funny. Check out that. Um, she got yeah, a remix of Venom funny. for the Venom movie too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she remixed it. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring up any other rapper on there. All right. Uh, <laughs> so this album, the way this album starts is, I think the to- well, it's obviously the tone setter. Her her intro uh, is called Introvert. Um, the thing that I liked most about you know this project is that. The title of it and you know the beginning track called introvert sometimes maybe introvert you know makes you think of somebody who's reserved somebody who doesn't have a lot to say somebody somebody like that but they subvert or they exceed your expectations with what they're doing uh, so this beginning track definitely exceeded my expectations it felt so grand uh the orchestra coming in and like just hitting your ears you're not even hearing anybody talk yet you're just hearing all this noise and i thought it was cool it was metaphorical for like you know there's a bunch of noise in the world but, you know, there's people who have things that need to be said. They just might not have the opportunity to say them. So, you know, this is her getting her opportunity to say what she needs to say. So I thought it was a really cool intro uh, to this whole project. How do y'all feel about the the beginning track? Yeah, it's definitely like based on the title of the album and even the title of the song, like you kind of get thrown off, honestly. Like mm-hmm. I wouldn't expect something that grandiose <laughs> or yeah. like it just hits so hard almost out of nowhere. Um, like I know when, when the song first came out, I was just like, what the hell is happening Mm -hmm. plus like the video for it is just so there's so much happening in the video itself and like she just kind of touches on a bunch of little things (laughs) it's it's great Mm -hmm. and it really does it does set the tone like you're saying Mm -hmm. coming from gray area she hit hard on gray area with offense so at this point she's shown that she knows how to set the tone with her albums and she's gonna hit you with something that's gonna almost i wouldn't say knock you out but throw you off your feet a little bit like okay i wasn't expecting this from you I've been a fan of Lil Sims for a minute and coming off of Stillness and Wonderland, um, I think Great Area, I mean, I know she's dropped, but Great Area was a big jump as far as like, I was like, okay, now you're taking that step as I'm a check for you all the time. And yeah. this album had a lot of expectations, especially coming off the singles. Because Introvert leads right into Woman, which is one of my favorite tracks of this year. I feel like she really laid that track down as far as like talking about how it is to be a woman, how they deal with things, how they deal with emotions as far as like, Dealing with men, dealing with a whole bunch of things. I feel like she didn't press it on you. She she didn't really mm-hmm. like make it feel like a forced topic that sometimes those songs can be like. I mean, I don't know about that's how I feel sometimes listening to songs about womanhood, being about being a gangster, whatever. Like sometimes it could be forced on you. And this one, I feel like she just laid it out on the table for a conversation or just like to, to show her opinion on things. Yeah, no, uh, definitely, for sure. Like this, I, I want to touch on the point that you were saying about, you know, the last album first that you were really checking for. I felt like in the last album, Gray Area, what we had seen from her to that point, she really perfected that. Like her craft at that point was perfected at that point. Like she was spitting her shit in that, saying my flow is like better than it's ever been. Like I, I'm, this is nothing to me, right? In that last album. So, I mean, why not believe her for this one? Uh, you hear those singles, uh, women Uh, you're talking about the representation of black women especially in this song is not forced at all it's it's done so eloquently yeah it's just amazing bro i just love cleo soul's part on here her production 
the production. Yes, that's that's the first thing that you hear when you into this album is this mm -hmm. production nuts. Her flows are changing mm -hmm. and she's gotten some beautiful voices already on this project like two tracks it yeah it's way more grand it felt way more thought out than um gray area because gray area just I, I gray area i felt thought out but to me at least i really was drawn into her rapping some of some of like the beat breakdowns with this one it was more about the theme it was more about the flow of the album almost she almost went more into her i mean she's always been a good songwriter to me but i feel like the way she made these songs flow even with the interludes with the, the themes of the tracks like woman point and kill the way she changed things up but it still felt cohesive was amazing to me like you're saying, like she's kind of worked more for uh, songwriting on this project. Mm -hmm. Like I think that kind of goes into the production itself too. Like mm -hmm. Gray Area, I feel was more, I guess, traditional hip hop, you could mm -hmm. say. Whereas this one is just kind of like there's a lot more instruments, and it felt more not strictly hip hop. Like like you could hear this in not like outside, but like it's more normal if that makes sense. Like, no, it's yeah, not like yeah. hip hop, hip hop. Like it's obviously mm -hmm. still <laughs> got it there, but. She showed, I mean, she was able to slow down a little bit and focus more on making a song than just showing she's better. She's a better rapper than everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, she was able, like I said, she's been able to do that. I think on that EP, um, Drop Six, she did that on some of the songs, like You Should Call Your Mom and stuff, where she really talked about things, personal things in her life and got uh, introspective. She she did that on Gray Area, you know, songs like Selfish, One on One, uh, FM, Pressure. But I feel like on here... She was able to do it on just about, I wouldn't say just about her, but she able, she was able to like paint the picture for everybody. Not just her, yeah. but just like about being a woman, about being in certain areas, about she just, she made it all it's, connect. And I was blown away throughout this album. Like speed, if, standing over. It feels like, it feels like almost like a movie, right? Where yes. it's like really thematic. Grand. And and yeah, that's especially, yeah, mm -hmm. it's so grand. It's so based in themes and, uh, you know, you got all these interludes, even though I don't really appreciate interludes that much. Um, they're kind of boring, but, you know, these ones, they had some things to say every now and then. And uh, like probably my favorite one was the rapper that came to T was probably my favorite interlude out of all mm -hmm. of them keep storytelling throughout this whole thing. And you were saying the seamless transition, that's what we look for in hip hop. Usually like when people are like rapping, right? You want you want a seamless transition to the next topic. She's doing that with the album list. Like you went from introvert, her as a person to woman, her as a person, but in a different like category. Then she goes into Two Worlds Apart, which is about, you know, two different people. Uh, and I love you, I hate you. Uh, I love, yeah, that's a highlight. The, mm -hmm. the, the transition into those two, like from those back to back, like. It's crazy, man. Um, you know, just talking about relationship struggles, mm -hmm. um, toxic, toxic relationships, dealing with that in her life. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, inten intense emotions. Of, yeah. Of love. You know, at the end, she connects it back to her father. And she basically, you know, you could hear it throughout the song, how she's talking about that dynamic. Like, sometimes I love you. Sometimes you're there for me. And even looking at other men, like sometimes they're there for me. But at the end of the day, someone might just say, that's a track about her daddy issues. And I hate when people do that because she really went into it and, the beat, everything, the way she started speeding up and started really going into it at the end, she's like, dad, like, I was like, that was awesome. Like, I, I feel like she doesn't, she doesn't have to tell you, like, at the end, she kind of get, you know, you you know it just by hearing the lyrics. You listen to her bars, you kind of get the picture, right? And you could, you could uh, mm -hmm. interpret it multiple ways, but she's really good at, you know, double entendres, all that. But really, you could take the tracks how you want them but she's going to eventually tell you what they really are about or give you the ultimate hint. And I feel like she's really good at doing that as well. I don't know about y'all. I know how people are with hip hop. Like they <laughs> expect a certain thing or, you know, certain people only blow up, but like she, she deserves a lot more praise than she's getting as far as like other people talking about her. I know we can't control that, but it sucks. I think part of that comes down to her being a UK artist too. Like yep. People around here don't really yep. <laughs> listen to UK artists, unfortunately. Yeah, and like songs like Rolling Stone and stuff like that. And even other songs on this album, her accent comes off and some people are instantly turned off by that. And some people are turned off by her topics because they talk about things that go on. Like some of her slang, you know, all that is tone it down to accommodate other people. Yeah. And I love that as well. Uh, and uh, it's funny too, because um, one of my guys, Daryl, he 
Mm-hmm. He's always hated UK rap just because of their voices. Yeah. And then um, when we did the Barf Bar After Dark a couple weeks ago, he <laughs> he came on and um, I brought up Little Sims and he's like, yo, I listened to that and it's amazing. And I started clowning on him because I'm like, yo, what the hell? He's proud of who she is, even with the title, you know, Deadly was talking on it. Uh, Deadly was touching on it earlier with Sometimes I Might Be an Introvert. And I think that really is the perfect title for this album because there is more laid back um, tracks on this album where she's going into, into things and she's not totally, I wouldn't say like she's not confident, but she comes off a little bit more reserved, but she's still speaking her piece. I can relate to that. So, you know, sometimes I do feel like an introvert and sometimes it's, you don't want to step out of your comfort zone or you you have a lot of things to say, but you don't say them how you want to because you just want to be in your little space. And I feel like maybe that's how this album is. Maybe it's supposed to be in this little space. Maybe it's supposed to be for the people who want to search for it and find really awesome music because she deserves all the praise she's getting and more because I don't hear anyone making I'm like this is one of the better albums of this year. Who's made who's made an album anywhere? close to this I, yeah. I mean it's crazy and i liked what you were talking about earlier when you were saying people don't really like the uk side or whatever uh, i feel like this one is less like way less uk than the last one the last one felt oh. reminds me more of like the influences of like of uk this one just feels like this is her bro like entirely like completely diverted from anything that had to do with like yeah anything drill so this is just like something new grand awesome i love it i wish she would get the same support that we get for uh other artists like you know bad bitch type artists i mean the mainstream is the mainstream for I ain't, people want what I they ain't, want yeah. and i understand oh, I that it. you know i ain't here to but hate little sims i wasn't little hating sims. little sims you know she has her spot i just think she she needs if anything bro like there's other rappers in her lane maybe it's because she's from the uk that get way more praise and i i'm not even gonna say that i just think little sims needs to get more hype forget what everyone else is getting she needs to just get more hype because she's at the point where I can put her up to bat album wise with a lot of other rappers that are higher than her tier wise. If you talk about sales, if you talk about people talking about them on the internet. Like this yeah, is true. This this is up there, um, male or female. I'm not even putting like some people would put this in a box. This is one of the better projects, period. Um, this, like I don't really get I get excited for albums sometimes and I build hype for albums. Like with this, I was expecting a lot and I got more, if not what I was expecting. And that doesn't happen yep. a lot for me at least. Um, this yep. year, this year has been a good year and this, but this is gonna be hard to beat. This is, this is gonna be one of those albums that is gonna be hard. I'm not gonna say it's my number one, but it's <laughs> it's it's putting the uh, albums in place because I haven't really fully thought of my year list so far. Yeah, it's definitely up there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sean, I know you, you like to break down bars a lot more. I don't know if you had some, but was there more any like bars that really stood out to you? Like on a oh. track or something? I have like uh, a few lines, but um. One of them, just off of uh, off introvert itself, she says like um, something along the lines of "motherfucker, you've earned this." Mm-hmm. Like in, and that's like her inner demons yelling at her, mm-hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. Which to me, like as if she's saying that she's an introvert, like, but she's also in this sort of like extroverted lane. <laughs> like yeah. you can't. It's really hard to be an introvert in hip hop. I feel. Yeah. Like, heck yeah. It's aggressive. <laughs> I mean, especially like, it's just, you got to be proud of yourself. A lot of times you got to mm-hmm. boast about yourself to get hype from others, you know? Yeah. And it's like, she's basically overcoming any sort of doubts or any sort of um, limitations she's put on herself. Like, mm-hmm. and she's like, nah, I, I deserve any sort of praise I'm getting. And I deserve to get more, if mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. And then she kind of continues that on um, Standing Ovation too, which is just a whole track about saying how that- dope she is. <laughs> Yeah, because I feel like she should, she deserves to be a little braggadocious. Like, I feel yeah. like she does, she did it on, of course, like Venom and stuff like that. But I feel like now that you have, because I think uh, Gray Era was a big project for her as far as like she got a lot of attention, a lot of critical uh, acclaim from that. Now's the time where you could really set that lane for yourself. I think she's starting to realize, like, I got this on lock. She, I think she already, but I think she's like, as far as like acclaim wise, people are looking to me. To make statements they're looking to me to make good music and i deserve every bit of this i'm getting because i've been grinding doing trying to make hits trying to do things for years and now people are showing me love for my lane my type of music i'm making she's killing it she goes over so many different topics so many different topics but she hits so well on every single one of them i see you as like a, a love song uh played for my girl once you know uh she she proposed to me right then and there um and it was just amazing it was an amazing moment yeah we just love each other after oh, that yeah? uh, thank you little sense for trying to not for me bro i just 
Yeah, the little the love track work. You know, I feel like you know you gotta have a love track. You gotta have a love track or two on y'all. I and mean, she made it work. She and this was an hour and five minutes, and yeah. none of that time I was sitting there like, can this end? I'm not gonna say this is gonna be maybe one of my most replayed albums. You know, during the day I'm slapping other things, <laughs> but when I really want to sit and listen to music, this is gonna be coming on every time probably. So the only critique I could say, like if I wanted to have a nitpick. Maybe I don't know if she can. Maybe try to do. You know, I don't want her to though. Let's say I don't want you to try to do something that's like you don't really feel comfortable doing. Like don't make a trap song or do something too crazy. But if she, maybe if she wanted to appeal to a different audience a little bit, maybe throw a little little hint to that. You know, but this was perfect. I wouldn't I wouldn't make any changes to it. But you know, if I feel like you know anything has room for any different sounds. If you're this talented, I feel like you could do anything. She can make it work, whether it's trap, get, whether it's R and B. Maybe it's R and B where she's like singing more, you know, at different. Like she could be more versatile because with this, she showed me she could cross over and try many different sounds. It's gonna work. Yeah, I think the only thing I just kind of didn't really care for on this album is just like I like the interludes, but they also mm-hmm. just kind of felt thrown in there at times. Yeah, okay. Like I don't know, for me, it kind of like threw off the flow just enough that I'm okay. like, okay, well, we have another interlude now. All right. But like, it also makes sense to have them there because they really set the tone for like the next few tracks. Yeah. So it's like, how else would you really transition into it? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I feel with interludes like an artist will have a concept <laughs> or like a theme for album and they put them in there to make it work when they maybe didn't need them. And I get what you're saying with Deshaun. She maybe could have just let it flow. And w- because the songs, she could have maybe put a little transition to songs and not made it a full interlude or something. You know? Yeah. But, but I also get like, like why you want to have an yeah, yeah. Like, I get why you want to have an actual interlude yeah. track too though because it's mm-hmm. like I know a lot of times when you have um, when you have a song that kind of cuts into an interlude or like at the end or at the beginning of a song it's just like how do I listen to this outside of the album Yeah, I get it, and and I think that she knows that most people are going to listen to her music as out as well. Yeah. So because I don't really know what song on here single wise with be played on the radio out at least especially out here no, no, I mean, we have a different maybe out the uk but out here i don't i, I yeah. don't hear this right now but it should be i didn't even you i didn't even know what this album was gonna be like when i heard the singles bro this the, yeah, singles, the, thing was, the yeah. singles threw you off a little bit and i think she did that on purpose because it was like okay this is a little bit of old little sims here's some new stuff where i'm doing different flows sounding completely different and then and- and then here's Rolling Stone. Yeah. Like, I, was, I was like, what the fuck? But I love that because Rolling Stone I, probably was my least favorite single and it fit perfectly in the album. And I was saying, I'm like, it's going to be like Kendrick. Well, Kendrick will drop uh, Swimming Pools. And I love that track. But within the album, it flowed way better than looking at it outside from like, this is a Kendrick track, like Swimming Pools. That doesn't, you know, I feel like. Uh, yeah, that's that meaning. Yeah. You know, you, call, you, uh, you find ways to put tracks out that. Throw your fans off a little bit, but when the album comes out, wow, you made that fit seamlessly. Yeah, I know. Um, like I've made a conscious decision not to really listen to any of the singles after Woman came out. Yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and, and, and entirely because like I really like Introvert and Woman. I'm like, I'm just gonna spoil the album for me at this point. Yeah, because th- what if those <laughs> were the best tracks? And thankfully yeah. they weren't. You know, they right. were some of the best tracks, but they weren't like, oh, these are the best tracks, and nothing else is touching that. Yeah. Now, I, 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 I thankfully like. Rolling Stone, I talked to some people and they said that one threw them off. And I, I you didn't that. catch that one. Yeah, you heard it within the album. It fit perfectly, but it didn't throw me off. I'm like, okay, she's trying to do something a little different, but still her. And I think she'll make it work within the album. And compared to the other singles, to me, it stood out the most. I, I really just like how she changed up her voice on that. She didn't throw something where I'm like, yo, this is horrible. <laughs> like, turn this off. Like, there was nothing like, I'm going to throw it out there. But now I'm like, yo, I can't listen to this right now. <laughs> Everything oh was God. like, okay, you try something different. It might not hit as much as you're doing your regular thing, but I like that you tried that because maybe you can expand. And it it, def- yeah. it it can help the song still. I love that one. I love the the track that comes after "Protect My Energy." I feel like that's one of the songs that can definitely be put on like uh, one of these Spotify playlists and shit, mm. and just being put on repeat because. Yeah, like who doesn't want to hear a song about protecting your own energy and like all this? I feel like energy is such a such a big trendy topic, anyways. Nowadays, like she was hitting on some topics that like people really do be buzzing about, and uh, but she wasn't coming off corny or anything. No, like, yeah. like, it was, corny like, or it was just nope. it was it was genuine the entire time. So I, what's really gonna come down to it is these algorithms pushing Lil Sims's project into 
the next step uh, because I don't know how uh, like the culture is going to find it on their own without stuff like that or how uh, uh, word, or I think how, word of mouth I just think more people got to try to put because whenever I show people little sims unless they don't for the most part like uh, UK music for some reason like usually they're like okay I can see this you know it's just they might not have heard of her you just got to try to put people on she doesn't get a lot and I think a part of that is maybe she is kind of introverted so she doesn't do what other artists do as far as like building hype and you know a lot of artists in her lane as far as the kind of underground but you know people know about them they're not gonna do stunts and stuff to get hype but she could maybe do a little bit more I don't know what it's hard it's hard I, you know we do it we doing well, a podcast I mean, and we got to promote ourselves and you know you got to find ways to make people attached to you emotionally I think this album she could do that there was a lot of emotional tuggers a lot of songs that I could I could relate to, and I really felt like I know Lil Sims more as an artist, you know? Yeah, I mean, I have Spotify pulled up right now, and I guess she's on a few um, of Spotify's playlists, so... Yeah, she gets some love. Oh. That's how people find them. That, I was going to say, that's how people find artists nowadays, is like, they playlist. look on playlists. Playlist. Yeah. On, so, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, people like uh, Fantano. Did y'all have any, like, did y'all have, like, three favorite tracks? Y'all give me top three, maybe? No? Point and kill. We didn't even get to talk about it yet. Point and kill is definitely one of my favorites. Point point and kill has got uh, is crazy. I've never heard of uh Obang Jair Jair. Obang Jair. No, I I've never know. heard of the dude either. Yeah. He's but he's apparently from the UK. He's a Nigerian uh UK born uh, and he's R and B artist. It didn't really sound like R and B to me, but like whatever he was doing, bro, his shit was working. That mm-hmm. I was feeling that. I was feeling that if i want it it's mine yes. that was so f- want it, i'm gonna go get it like mm-hmm. for real misunderstood is also one of my favorite ones um that one's got like my favorite sample in the whole project uh i'd be catching myself singing that 24 7 it's just yeah so that was a, an awesome closer she started mm-hmm. great it ended great i think protect my energy was my last favorite that little okay. club, club dance banger type okay. shit you know so i'll go um okay. i mean it, it's gonna change up a bit but i think i mean introvert like it just just having the orchestra and like all the instruments come in like so hard before she even starts rapping like that always gets me yeah mm-hmm. um and then i love you i hate you like mm-hmm. the hook just keeps getting stuck in my head <laughs> like mm-hmm. i was i was listening to yep. it again like last night or the album last night and i'm like damn this is just gonna be stuck in my head all day isn't it <laughs> yeah i was um, stuck in my head for weeks yeah and then i don't know between i'm kind of between like rolling stone and point and kill Okay. Just, Cause point and kill is like, it's just a vibe, <laughs> but then rolling stone, like just the way she switches up her voice. Like, like that gets me too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, for me, um, I love you. I hate you. Um, I was replaying that single a bunch when it dropped, loved how it fit in the album. I love point and kill. I love the video of point and kill a lot too. That was a smooth video. And then, uh, misunderstood. I love the closer on that album. I feel like that was a perfect closer. That's my three. You know, she she did go into her R and B bag a little bit. Now that I she think did, about it, yeah, she did. Talking like, about it, I think she can you know, get more into when that. she get, when she starts the the verse on Point and Kill, bro. The way she comes in on that is smooth. She could, smooth. I think she could really do it if she really like made a song, like a few songs like that. I feel like if there was something that could maybe make her appeal uh, to more people, sometimes people like when uh, artists get into that R and B mix vibe. So she could do that. Point and Kill kind of had that smooth. It wasn't totally like that, but it had that smooth vibe. Get her on an R and B track with Jid. <laughs> Jid, <laughs> Jid could yeah, do it too. Jid be singing too. <laughs> yes, wild. he could do it. It would be wild. <laughs> Atlanta UK crossover, please, please. <laughs> yeah, I would love it if more um, artists from out here would collaborate with her if she wants that. I don't know, you know. If, if, I'm not on her album, maybe for songs, singles, get guest verse from her. I would love to hear her more on other people's work. Right. She's exactly. pretty, like, she, I feel like she would kill a lot of people's uh, guest spots. If people would fit her on their album, it would work. Let's get UK features that aren't Skepta and Stormzy. Yeah, switch it up. <laughs> yeah, switch it up, man. Like, I, yeah, I, mean, I want to hear more voices, voices from the UK. Slow Thigh, too. Yeah. It's only two features. Um she did better than J. Cole this time, feature feature for feature matchup. <laughs> no, uh, stop it. Stop it. Don't do this. All right, y'all. That concludes this episode. Uh, if you didn't already, you, you hit that little button down there. You see it says subscribe. It's red. It should be white. Mm-hmm. Um, 
hit the bell that should mm-hmm. be gray and uh hit the like button that should be blue yeah that's how that's how it goes uh shout out our guest sean barf bar uh check him out uh he's talked about it so much it's nauseating um but you know <laughs> thank you for having me <laughs> of course yeah everything hip-hop babies related will be linked down below bar for bar will be linked down below as well if you want to tap in of course um we're gonna have more collabs hopefully to come that's all we gotta say about this little sims <laughs> peace out peace. anything is possible yes sir ski.